On this episode of Nugget Project, I melt because it's about 45 degrees in Australia and it's about 55 degrees in this shed. Also, we put an oil catch can in our car. Gang, so we're having an early start today. For anyone not in Australia, we are having a stupid heat wave. It was about 45 degrees in my house yesterday, and it was 30 degrees last night trying to sleep. We don't have aircon, so that sucked. Um, today's looking to be about 42, and God knows what that's going to be in the shed where the nuggets kept. So we're uh, we're going to get there early and try and beat the heat. Um, I'm not too sure what that is in Fahrenheit for you uh, for you Yanks, but maybe just start using centigrade like the rest of the world, and it won't be a problem. Uh, cool. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna do our oil catch can today. This is now the second iteration of the can. I'll uh, kind of explain the reasoning behind that. Uh, the first one didn't work out. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll give that a crack today. Okie dokie. So we're back in the shed. I just fixed up my uh, cooling system. Uh, took out the thermostat because it's buggered and we don't need it. Got a new gasket for that, so that's all sealed up, which is good. So now we've got to fit an oil catch can in this little space here. I need to take out my water squirter and all that sort of stuff. Um, so here is the original plan. I bought this guy, um, which worked out really well. It actually fit in there perfectly. I had all the fittings sorted out for it. I had two little filters, had the lines. And then the day I was coming to fit it up, I read a post that said, you need a two liter oil catch can, part of the cams regs. I completely missed that because um, I was looking at the XL regs and didn't realize it was like a general regulation. So that kind of sucks. So I went, well, okay, what's my next option? So I went online and I found this guy, which looks like a cartoon robot from a Pixar movie. What it actually is, is a fuel surge tank. Um, and so these fittings, these filters, and these are the fittings I, all, I had for the original one. Um, the, the sizes were too big, so I 3D printed up some adapters and adapters for the tap, so that's a drain tap, that's just a bung. They're the two lines that come in from my breather, and then these are just the breather filters. Um, obviously I made this at home and I didn't have a chance to check out the car, and uh, sadly the breathers are definitely not going to fit in there. But we should be able to make the tank fit in there, and then I'll just uh, print up some new adapters and make the breather, the filters come out through here or something like that. That's a problem for future Matt, but for today I want to just get this in here. So what we'll do is... Um, We'll take this out and then we'll try and fit that in there. <laughs> So here's where we're at. So it's a very tight spot, but I think I've figured it out. So uh, I've just taken the filters off for now, and I can fit it in there. The only thing that's um, stopping it is we've got the drain and the and the bung, and that interferes with the power steering line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend the top line up a little bit, and just shorten this hose so it doesn't put stress on the bottle, and that'll sit above, and basically, the bottom line will sit underneath, and the top line will sit above here, and they'll both sit either side, and that should fit fine, and then we can just stick a bolt because we've got the two brackets there. So one bracket will bolt straight through there, which I can access from inside the wheel arch, and the other one will bolt just straight through here. And we can just bolt that down, and that'll stay in there. So it's going to be a bit of jiggery pokery. Um, this side I'm just going to have to blank off because I can't, because the headlight assembly is there, so I can't do much about that. Um, so this side, what I'll do is because it's quite a big hole, I'll um, print up an adapter, design an adapter because it'll sit. Um, sort of just here so I can print up an adapter and now I can run a pipe and now I can run the, the filters pretty much anywhere I want or I can just face them down have the filters there something like that that's not really a worry for me right now it's just making this sucker fit in also it's 9 30 in the morning and it's already about 39 degrees and god knows how hot it is in this shirt look at the sweat dripping off me it's ridiculous so uh, we'll try and get this done early and get out of here Alrighty, we've made this sucker fit now, so I've just got to drill a couple of holes here and here, which I can access through the wheel arch, which is pretty easy. So I'll drill them now, see if it fits.
Okie dokie, so she's in. I've drilled a couple of holes and this side we put a spacer just to lift that up a bit. Reason being is I trimmed back the little uh, cooling fins on the headlight since we're not really going to be using the headlight. And we should be able to make a, I'll 3D print another one of these adapters but with a right angle. And I'll be able to fit one of the vents just there. Super easy. And then the other side I'm going to do the same thing with a right angle and the other one will sit just here. And that's where our uh, cooling reservoir goes and I can point it down or whatever and just keep it out of the way. Done and done. Down here, um, it's a bit hard to see, but the, um, so these, these hoses go down to the, um, the cooling pipes for the power steering. So I've just got a little rubber um, piece on there just to stop it rubbing. And then we've got our tap. So the tap turns on and off easily to drain the catch can. Um, and then I'll just put a little right angle piece that points down with a hose down to the ground. So all we're gonna do is stick a can under there, turn it on, drain it at the end of each event or each lap or whatever. Super easy. So once I 3D print up those adapters, we're good to go. So now we'll just uh, add the hoses. Also, before I forget, I had uh, quite a few people hit me up asking for these guys. So we've got uh, proper Nugget Project stickers. They're um, vinyl cut, weatherproof, all that stuff. I reckon they look pretty sick. I paid a bit extra to get some good quality ones. So um, I'm doing them for seven bucks each, including postage around Australia. Um, and yeah, that sort of covers the cost of the sticker, the postage, and a couple of extra bucks in my pocket to help pay to finish this sucker. So uh, yes, if anybody wants one, I appreciate it. So I've got this um, pipe. It's not a huge diameter, but it's the same outlet as the standard rocker cover breathers. So we've uh, just connected that up, tucked it here between the reservoir and the power steering reservoir, and they'll come up through here. And then these are the two pipes. So these are the two breathers out of the rocker cover. So basically we need to um, connect these pipes up to there, and then we need to just blank these ones off. Because I like doing things properly, instead of just sticking a bolt, in a pipe, like a Neanderthal, I got these little 8mm blankers and they'll just go on there with a zip tie or a clamp and blank it off properly. Gang, if you haven't realized by now, I love making stuff in my 3D printer. So with these pipes flopping around here, I designed up these little guys, which basically will hold them together. It's got a little screw to hold it together and these little slots here and on the side allow for a cable tie to go through. So you can clamp it on here and then we can uh, cable tie it to the wiring loom, this pipe here, anywhere else we need to. I know it's overkill, but why the hell not? Okay, so my, apart from the filters, we're done. I've got uh, got them all connected up. I've got our little blankers. I've got those little uh, brackets in there. They cable tie it up and just make it all a bit neater, which is cool. Um, hose on there. We're just gonna uh, just gonna print up little adapters, and then our filters. I'm gonna have one will sit there, and the other one will sit just underneath the bottle there. Nice and flush, so that it'll work really well. Uh, and underneath here, we can see that green hose. So that's our tap to drain our bottle. And I've just put that down, you can see a little clamp down there, and that'll just stop that pipe flopping around and going to alternator belt and all sorts of fun things like that. So when I want to drain this, I just put a can on the ground, open the tap, drain it out. Good to go, Gary. Sick, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool, so that's worked out pretty well. Um, I know a lot of you are gonna be saying, why on earth did you go to so much effort customizing all this crap to fit in here? You know, you can buy, uh, there's a few companies that make these for the XL Race Series. Um, if you haven't figured it out by now, number one, I like making stuff. Number two, I'm trying to do this thrifty. Some things on this car obviously aren't thrifty, but uh, I'm just showing you that you can do these things for not much money. So, uh, one of the big brand ones for this car, which is a great piece of kit, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not paying them out, but it's $285 without shipping. Um, and it fits in there perfect, but that's a lot of money. This guy, uh, it's a fuel surge tank I got off eBay. 
It's just an all catch can. You can buy eBay stuff for this, it doesn't matter. That cost me $40 delivered. Then the fittings are about 15 bucks. The filters I got off the other catch can, but honestly, you can get them online for two to five bucks each. So all up, this probably cost me 60 bucks, 70 bucks, and that's fitted, done, and we'll do exactly the same job. So 70 bucks or 285 bucks. You can see where I'm going with this. Alrighty, so now we've got an oil catch can in there. What the hell is it and what does it do? So a lot of you guys already know what all this is about, but for those of you that don't, um, let's do a quick uh, engine 101 of how it all works. So basically you've got your, we'll pretend this is the, the piston of the engine. It's going up and down, you've got your air coming in, squeeze, bang, blow, exhaust gases go out. On the side of your piston, you've got rings. So you've got uh, compression rings, oil rings, uh, I can't remember what the other one's called, but basically those rings uh, keep a tight fit on the um, cylinder wall. So when your um, fuel and air ignite and it pushes the piston down, all those gases don't just push around the side of the piston, it actually pushes it down, okay? Um, having said that, obviously in, in high performance applications um, and things like that, you've got a, and high compression engines, you've got a lot of force on those. And those rings, they do a great job, the gases do escape down the side. So when those gases do escape down the side, basically they're now in the crankcase. So that's where your, uh, your crankshaft is, all your bearings and where your oil sits. Now, that needs to vent, obviously, if that pressure just keeps going in, it needs to vent out somehow, otherwise it's gonna end up going out, it's gonna blow out um, seals or something like that on the engine bay. So on all cars, you've got breather pipes out the top of the, uh, the cam cover, the rocker cover, whatever type of engine you've got. And they're basically just breather pipes, and these pipes go back into your intake manifold. So on a normal car, um, any of that excess pressure gets bled back into the induction manifold and then goes back through the engine cycle, burns off, yada yada. The problem with that is on a uh, performance car, I say performance car, this is an XL, but basically we're pushing these engines much harder than they're ever designed for. So you do get a lot of what's called blow-by, which is the, uh, the air going past the rings. Um, you get a lot of blow-by on the high, high performance cars, you know, like 2JZs, Ferraris, anything like that, you know, anything that's revving really high or little engines that are being pushed much harder than they should. Um, we don't want all those, all those gases and stuff, we don't want them going back into the intake. Basically, it's uh, remnants of sort of crappy unburnt fuel, uh, it's uh, sometimes exhaust, oh, yeah, sometimes exhaust gases, you know, once it's, it's burnt, and also it's um, oil fumes, because obviously it's wrapping around the, the crank cases, pushing all the oil around, all the oil is mystifying. Mystifying, is that a word? Atomizing. Um, and then all that's being dragged out through and then going back into the induction manifold, which then goes in your engine. So when you're pushing really hard, you're then not just getting a nice clean air fuel mixture, you're getting air fuel, burnt oil, old fuel that's not burnt properly and also exhaust gases in there, which isn't good, obviously. Um, so what the oil catch can does, is instead of those pipes going back into a breather, basically we just reroute those pipes into an oil catch can. Um, and then we have a breather on the side and that just vents the atmosphere, but all the oil and all that stuff gets caught in the can and then the excess air just goes out to atmosphere. Um, on a road going car, you do legally have to put that back into the intake, which is fine. So basically your oil and crap catches in there and then just the clean air goes back into the intake. Um, race cars, you don't need to do that. You can just run a vent, vent to atmosphere, that is fine. So hopefully that makes sense. That's why you need an oil catch can. And on things like this, um, we will see a lot of oil. You know, we'll, we'll get a lot of oil in this thing. Um, we'll need to drain out and then you need to obviously check your oil level to make sure it's all, it's all clean. Um, a lot of modern performance cars, we're running E85 now, uh, which is fantastic stuff, especially on turbo cars. E85 has a very high detonation point, so you don't get um, pinging and detonation in cars and you can run much higher boost. Um, E85 tends to be really bad because it, 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 I don't know, it seems to escape past the rings a lot better. I'm sure there's technical guys that would know a lot more about that, but it also um, doesn't react well with the oil and it can really damage the, uh, the oil in the engine. And you'll see uh, E85 performance cars, you drain the, the catch can after a few laps on a track and seriously, you just get crap coming out of it. Um, so an oil catch can is super important for that, otherwise that crap's going straight back through your intake. And on a turbo car, that's going through your intercooler as well, uh, which cools in there, clogs it up. It's all gross, you know. Stuffs up sensors and all sorts of stuff. So that is an oil catch can and that is our oil catch can. Once I get those filters in, I'll take a photo and put it on the Facebook group. Uh, apart from that, we're pretty much done. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, I got project stick on the old man's car. <laughs> nice.